Hey everybody, it's Dr. Sasheen and I wanted to jump on live because I've been scrolling through my feed today um, and not my Facebook feed but also uh, my other feed on Instagram and other places and I tried to stay off Twitter and so that's one of the, I, I want to talk about situational anxiety versus chronic anxiety and why a lot of what people are feeling though it may feel chronic is actually very situation based and if we could just be a little bit kinder about what we're consuming mm -hmm we might actually find, let me turn that off because that buzzing is going to drive me nuts. Um, we might actually find that we can decrease that cortisol, that stress hormone that seems to be riding on top of most people all day long. So as I was scrolling through, I get to, um, Twitter notifications on occasion and I used to be a Twitter junkie especially during election time. And I try to keep my finger on the pulse of what's happening because I do think that Twitter is kind of the water cooler of the world now um, for good and for ill. I mean, however you want to look at it, but it does provide a place to get kind of the pulse of what's happening in, in not real time all the time, but pretty darn close. But what I found and what I do is that I limit my exposure because Twitter will have me thinking that I am chronically anxious all the time. And I got enough stuff in my life to be anxious about, right? And so I want to ask you, when you are going through your day, do you, uh, do you actually feel anxious all the time or are you feeding so much into your brain that you just, you can't tell the difference anymore? Because I think what's happening to a lot of people is that they they have decided to keep social media open in some way, shape or form all day long. And so the constant barrage, what, and I mean, I'm talking about, you know, the news alerts and then not just Twitter, the news alerts, the Facebook updates, the Instagram updates, the TikTok updates, like all of it just comes and comes and comes. It just floods. And because of that flood, it feels like we're drowning most of the time. I think a lot of people just feel like, oh my gosh, there's just no end to how I, I feel there's just no end to how stressed I am well but actually there can be and it starts with a choice so let me back up situational anxiety is anxiety based on the situation presented to you that you may feel fearful or anxious about it's a situation that you may find um, repeats itself which could turn it into chronic anxiety but it doesn't have to but what it is is based on the situation and once the situation is done then the anxiety should go away if it doesn't, if you still feel that you are just unable to settle down, stop the racing thoughts, bring yourself back to a, a, a place of, of balance, not stasis, because, you know, we, we ebb and flow, we go up and down. I'm sorry for the lighting, but, you know, the sun moves, so. Um, but situational shifts into chronic when we, for, we forget that we don't have to carry the past into the future. We don't even have to carry the past into the present, um, but we for sure don't have to carry the past into the future. And because we spend so much time trying to figure out how to make the past not repeat the future, we begin to chronically feel stressed about the future all the time. That's chronic anxiety. That's this feeling of, I have to prevent the stuff that's in the past from happening in the future, and so I'm gonna worry, that I have to worry myself in the present. And that consumes all of your thoughts. It consumes all of your self-talk. It consumes all of your um, emotional state. And you just, you, you find that you're fluctuating, like you're going up and down and up and down and up and down. Well, it's going to tire anybody out after a while. Um, and so before you rush off and ask your doctor to test you for adrenal fatigue, ask yourself, how much of my day am I spending worrying about what happened in the past happening again in the present or the future? How much of my day am I spending pr hoping to protect myself from what happened in the past again in the future? How much of my day am I quietly but subconsciously on high alert for the things that I'm afraid to happen happening now or some sometime now? I like to say um, you can always tell if something's really pressing or if you're borrowing trouble. If it's really pressing, are you in danger right now? Number one, is are you physically in danger? right now like at this very moment if the answer is no what are you worrying about number two are you emotionally in danger like if someone yelling at you or something really like is there something that is just calling at you no okay have you had enough to eat have you had enough to drink 
Have you had enough sleep? If you can answer yes to those three, you're not in any immediate danger, physically or emotionally or mentally, but yet you still feel like you've got to stay on high alert because at any moment something bad could happen, then you need to talk to someone because that is a state of chronic anxiety and there is a diagnosis that may help to alleviate that um, by getting help. I'm not going to drop any names for services. They're all over the place. So, But if you're like me and someone who has suffered from anxiety in the past um, and imposter syndrome and all of those wonderful things, well, I've got this one hair. My hairdresser needs to color my hair, but I haven't been to see her in a while. But that's, that's for another day. Um, but for someone like me for whom I got therapy, I've been to therapy, I think it's one of the most amazing things that you can ever do for your life for your heart, for your brain, for your soul. Um, but maybe you're someone who doesn't like therapists, and I suggest that you begin to journal out what's really happening. Get a journal. Get a journal. And write out what's actually bothering you. And if you find that what's actually wrong isn't wrong in the moment, then it's time to start, to start thinking about how to move the emotions so that they're not ruining your day, like ruining your life every single day over things that aren't happening to you. They may have happened to you in the past, or they may not have happened to you in the past. They may have happened to somebody else in the past. And you may feel like, well, I don't want that to happen to me. But worrying that they might happen to you, and then holding on to the emotion that they are going to happen to you, makes you chronically stressed all day long all day long. You constantly feel as though you've got to stay on such high alert that your brain never shuts off and you never find any measure of peace. And I'm all about peace. Like at this point in time, we are, we are not post pandemic. We're still in a pandemic, but what we are also is in a era of time now where we can no longer operate at that high level of stress, that high level of anxiety. And so as people have realize, okay, I need to come down. Here comes the next thing, right? That now it's the talk of the recession and it's the talk of the dollar and it's the talk of this and it's the talk of that. So many things. Again, let's pull it back. Are you physically in danger at this moment? Is the situation that is facing you in this moment something that is physically, emotionally, or mentally going to harm you? If the answer to that is yes, then let's do something about that. The best antidote to situational anxiety is action. It's absolute action. It's sitting down with yourself. It may be journaling. Might be. Might be journaling. It may be you need to hang out with some friends and not isolate. So many of us isolated for the past two and a half years that we've forgotten what it's like to get out there and just enjoy a day. Uh, just breathe in the air. Okay, so maybe six feet apart, but still breathe in the air of other people's energy because we get revived by that if you're the kind of person who really needs that. Um, it may be that you just need to think about your circumstances and ask yourself, okay, what can I do? What can I do? And then go do that. And if it's this big piece, if it's this big puzzle and you don't know where to start, take the first piece. I love jigsaw puzzles. One of the things that brings me down, that calms my soul, uh, is to put together a jigsaw puzzle. It's, ever since I was little, I've liked puzzles. I've liked the idea of puzzles. I've liked the the control that puzzles give you, but I also like the the mystery of the puzzle because you're not you know what it's going to look like, you know the end of it, but you don't know quite yet how you're going to get there because all these pieces just look the same, now, or they there are so many of them because I like to do the big ones. Not gonna lie, um, but you just don't know you don't know yet what it's really going to look like until you put it together. What is the thing that you can do in the moment to bring your situational anxiety under control? How can you circumvent, short circuit your fear response to anxiety? Well, again, you can start writing it out immediately. Just grab, I don't care if you grab one of a little, like carry around one of those little pads with you. And when you start to feel yourself tensing up, you write out, what am I feeling right now? Right now. What is the problem right now? Am I, am I sick? Am I hurt? Is there something happening? Is someone, is someone 
doing something to me, whether that's physically, emotionally, or mentally. And if whatever the case may be, if someone's yelling at you or making you feel bad or attacking your self-esteem or attacking something about you or trying to physically harm you, okay, situation anxiety, that makes perfect sense. Now, how do we solve that? Well, we remove that person <laughs> from their ability to physically hurt us if we can. Same with emotions, same with mentality. We remove the, the stressor. And that may mean that you have to remove yourself and place yourself someplace else so that the stressor that is causing you to feel this situational anxiety goes away. It just goes away. Um, if it's, I'm on, I've been on social media for three hours and I've, I'm literally, I've lost myself in, in the scroll. Turn it off. Turn it off. Go watch TV. Go uh, I don't know, knit, crochet, go for a run, go for a walk, go have a glass of wine, go have a soda, I don't care, but turn it off. Are you feeling lonely? Maybe you're emotionally anxious because you need someone to talk to. Pick up the phone, don't text, pick up the phone. I know people are gonna say, but I don't like phone calls, text me first, you know what? No, pick up the phone, even if you have to leave a voicemail, because sometimes that mere auditory stimulation of hearing someone else's voice on their voicemail may be all that you need not to feel so alone in the moment. You know what I mean? And so that's situational. Now we get to the chronic stuff. This is the stuff that puts us in the hospital. Full disclosure, it put me in the hospital. This is the stuff that we are constantly on high alert about that isn't happening to us in the moment. But because we are constantly on high alert, it doesn't matter if it's happening to us in the moment or not, everything is on high alert. Our blood pressure is on high alert, our heart rate, our brain activity, our energy, our emotions, our physicality, our sleep patterns. Everything is on high alert because something might happen. And it may be something that's happened in the past and keeps repeating itself. That pattern causes, causes chronic stress, that pattern. Um, so what do you do about that? Right? When you say, okay, Dr. Sashin, but this is chronic. So now what do I do? Well, I'm telling you, the first thing you've got to do is acknowledge that you can't handle this yourself. You can't do it. You can't handle it yourself. You need to get help. Because chronic anxiety and chronic stress will put you in the hospital or worse. So acknowledge that, you know what? This may be beyond my measure of control. Okay. So maybe you're not ready to walk into a therapist's office. No problem. You don't have to, you can text a therapist. But maybe that's also not really your thing. You're more of an introvert or you're more someone who wants to be more self-directed. Journaling, sitting down and, and really having the conversations with yourself about, okay, this chronic anxiety thing is debilitating. So how do I get out from underneath this? How do I make this not part of my life? Hello to whoever's watching out there. How do I make this not a part of my life? Chronic anxiety is the anxiety that brings to your life things like, you know, premature gray hair. I'm not premature gray, I'm just getting old. Um, premature gray hair, heart arrhythmia, because the body absorbs the stress, right? The body absorbs the stress. If you are listening to the world at this moment, there are so many things that if you're already suffering from chronic anxiety, this chronic stress, there are so many things feeding that. So again, shut off, shut off the world, shut off the world. And let me tell you something. Um, if you've been trying to start something and you've like, it's been three years and you just can't get yourself kickstarted and you're, and you're down on yourself, that's chronic anxiety. That chronic anxiety prevents you from doing so many things that you would normally be doing. It, it's the procrastination factor. Okay, I, po I posted in uh, on my Facebook page, The Anxiety Solution by Dr. Sashin. I posted there that procrastination is anxiety looking for a miracle. Okay, and what do I mean by that? What I mean by that is when we procrastinate, and I'm talking chronic procrastination, not, I, I mean, everybody procrastinates. Let's just call it what it is. But chronic procrastination is a hope that has been derailed because procrastination chronic procrastination 
is anxiety that's like, I just, I can't do this because I don't believe that I can do this because I've got all this stress. And it's just this, this vicious cycle. And it just keeps spinning. It's the hamster wheel of uh, lack of confidence and lack of belief in yourself. It is literally the hamster wheel. And the only way to stop this is to disrupt it, to throw some, to throw a spanner in the wheel, to throw a spanner in the works, to stop the wheel. There's no way to do that on your own unless you are really good at and self-aware. There's no real way to do that effectively and successfully without getting some outside help. And so as I think about what's playing in the world of Twitter and what's going on out in the world, we're coming up, coming up on election season again here in the United States. And I think that's important. But I also see so many people who are struggling to kickstart their whatever's next. And I hear a lot of people saying the same thing, which is how can I stop procrastinating? And how can I just do all the things and I'm so stressed and I and I just I feel like I can't get started well let me tell you something you can't get started if you're constantly stressed about what you haven't started you can't get started when you're constantly stressed about what you haven't started and so the thing you've got to do the thing I want you to keep in mind and to realize there goes that here again mm -hmm, is that the resources and opportunities that you want to have in your life, the abundance, whatever it is that you're, that you're seeking in your life at this moment, juxtaposed against the noise of the world, the everything that's going wrong, everything that's going bad, everything that's possibly going into recession, all that stuff. What you've got to do is decide what's most important at this moment. Is it to stay chronically stressed and anxious about what may happen to you? Maybe, but may not. Or can you turn to the situation in front of you and ask yourself those very powerful and, uh, and anchoring questions? Because these are anchoring questions, right? Is there something wrong right now? Literally, is there something wrong in this moment? Is there something physically wrong, emotionally wrong, or mentally wrong in this moment that I need to do something about that would help relieve my anxiety? If the answer to that is there's nothing wrong, then my suggestion is to take the nothing wrongness, that beautiful nothing wrongness, there's nothing wrong, there's nothing wrong, there's nothing wrong, and go, okay, well, if there's nothing wrong, and I'm just anxious about what possibly could go wrong, then what is the next most efficient and effective act that I can do to help prevent whatever it is I fear is coming? What is the next? most efficient and effective action that I can do to help prevent what I fear is coming. One action, not 50, not a whole book worth, you know, you don't sit there and go, oh, there's like a thousand things that I can do. And so what do I begin? Because then that's analysis paralysis, which is another nasty trick that anxiety pulls out to say, oh, you can't do anything. There are too many things you could do, so don't even try to do one thing, because if you only do one thing, then you're not gonna do anything. Then why do anything? Mm-mm, mm-mm, mm What is the next thing? The next one thing that you can do? And make a list. Make a list. And don't make a list to check off. Make a list that says, oh, I can, I, I can do this. And it's a list of one, people. It's a list of one. Make a list of one, not a list of 50. Make a list of one, and when you cross off the one, put another thing on the list. Because when you're suffering from anxiety, situational or chronic, it's very easy to get overwhelmed in the minutia of stuff that you can use to distract yourself from the anxiety, but then the anxiety still doesn't go away. Because in the end, you're like, oh my God, I wasted the whole day making a list, and now I don't have time to even start the list. So make a list of one. Just one. Just one thing. And ask yourself very clearly, what time frame can I get this done in? Um, and what is the most, uh, what's the time frame I can get this done in? And what's preventing me from just doing it? Set the intention to take the action and then put your attention solely on that action and then do the act. Do the act and repeat it until the act is done. I would almost guarantee you 
99.9% of the time, you're going to find that your heart rate and your blood pressure have come down. The mere act of paying attention and doing the thing brings all of the flight or fight down. Oh, that's the lunch bell. Down. So I wanted to keep this short. I just haven't been on here in a while. I'm going to make it, be making a lot more videos in the next coming days because we're, I'm starting a, a new business, um, but I also am very committed to this work on the anxiety solution. And I want you to know that it is okay to just turn off the world and walk away from it for an hour or two. If something happens, somebody will find you. Somebody will find you. And if they don't, it didn't happen to you. It may at some point happen to you, but it didn't happen to you yet. So don't go looking for the trouble that you don't actually want to find. Instead, look for the things that you really want to find and go for that. It's been Dr. Sashin. Thank you so much for tuning in. I know this is very spontaneous and spur of the moment. I'll try to do better about scheduling that so you can hook up and, and chat with me. Leave a comment below. Tell me what you got out of this. And if there's anything else you want to hear about, I'll be talking a lot more about the Peace of Mind channel, which is my new YouTube channel. But also, I'm going to be starting the Peace of Mind group, where if you are someone who really wants to focus on peace of mind and not situational and chronic anxiety and stress, then come on over, join the conversation about how we can get to peace of mind so that we can have a lot more entertaining life and a lot less stress. That's it for today, or at least for this moment. It's Dr. Sashin signing off. Take care. Bye.